<laughs> I'm very invested in that series. Fruit Pie the Magician, you're absolutely right. Batman vs. Superman is going to be a literal clusterfuck. They only have time to introduce these characters for like five minutes before they all have to fight. That's, listen, that's going to be the least of the movie's clusterfucky problems. We'll see. It's probably, also, probably should have just focused on Batman and Superman. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or, you know, focused on Batman in a different movie and then brought them <laughs> together. So then we know him when we go into a Batman-Superman movie. Wouldn't it be amazing if we had all sorts of Batman <sighs> backstory in our brain when we watch the Batman versus Superman movie? Well, the problem with that... So many Batman reboots. <laughs> yeah, there's so many. I think they maybe they partially wanted to avoid the fact that they would be rebooting Batman again. But they're already rebooting Batman again know, in the movie. I know. I don't know. <laughs> There's no good answer. The problem is everybody knows Batman at this point. Yeah. So you don't necessarily need his backstory again. But this is a new Batman. You know, it's the first time we're seeing in this, this actor Batman in universe, this role. In this Batman universe, apparently there was a Robin who's dead. Oh, really? The, in, in the trailer, you see a Robin suit with, like, Joker writing on it. This oh, Batman I that. has like a crazy backstory, which oh, I'm sure God. is is good. Well, the movie is two and a half hours long, well, there you so go. we got plenty of time. There you go. Only the last two hours will be punching. <laughs> there was, there'll be plenty of extra time for backstory. Yay, punching! Punching! Dick punch! Let's see here. Uh, November Tango 19. On the note of TV, what's your opinion on Vikings on History Channel? I love it, but I feel as though the episodes drag on a bit and the action is poorly paced. Have you seen Vikings? I have not seen Vikings, but I believe that's the show that Jim from Canada works on, or did work on. Yes. But I've never watched it. I also, I, I think that is one that's actually like written and acted by actual historians. Okay. So it's boring, is what you're saying. No, I, I hear very good things about not it. Not if it's done by historians. I'm sure it's boring. Jim's involved, so it's got to be good. I'm sure the visual effects are amazing, but there I have not watched the show. There you go. Let's oh. see here. Uh, hey, dudes. Has Jay seen Good Night, Mommy? I have. I was horribly disappointed by Good Night, Mommy. The trailer was the greatest thing. That sounds like a children's book. No, it's like a creepy horror it's film. It's an Austrian horror film. Yeah, flick. it's an Austrian horror movie, and it's... I. The problem is... I figured out the twist in the first five minutes, uh -huh. which made the rest of the movie boring, uh, and it lacked any sort of tension. Oh. So I, it looked great. I was really impressed by the trailer. I thought it was going to be this creepy, slow-moving, atmospheric thing, and I, I, it didn't work for me. Oh. There's like a ten-minute stretch when the kids have the mom tied up to the bed that I thought was kind of tense and unsettling, but that was it. Oh. So I was disappointed, unfortunately. I was looking forward to it. That's too bad when you when you when you get ahead of the filmmakers. Yeah, well, especially because there's this part in the trailer where it's manipulating what actually happens in the movie. In the trailer, it looks like the mom's in bed, and then a little cockroach crawls up by her mouth, mm -hmm. and then she eats it. That's the way it looks in the trailer. It looks like the mom eats this cockroach, mm -hmm. but in the movie, that doesn't happen at all. It's two completely different scenes that they put together to make it look like the mom is eating a cockroach. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. The mom doesn't eat the cockroach, and I was horribly disappointed by that. <laughs> That's such a J statement. <laughs> I wouldn't be disappointed if the trailer didn't make it look like the mom eats the cockroach. Right. Also wanted to recommend 45 Years. I swear it's not a grandma movie. Do you know? Have you heard of Forty Five uh, Years? I think that's the one we mentioned on this last half of the bag. That I say, I don't know what the fuck that is. That it's uh, recommended by someone who uh, wants to know about Good Night, Mummy. So okay, I will look into it. Good night, Mummy. One small bowl says that scene with the rock was nothing. I flexed my cast off when I had my circumcision. That's th th you, you. You. It was wanna... unrelated though. He had a cast on his arm, so it was kind of weird. <laughs> A lot of people have a lot of things to say at this. Exact I can hear moment. that. Yeah, Rich. Yes. Says bad Korean gamer. The answer is no. If you were to get a beginner's Warhammer 40k set as a gift, would you like them pre-painted, just to play the tabletop game, or would you like to paint them yourself? Pre-painted. Pre-painted. Because I, I would do a terrible job. Yeah. Okay. I would do. I know I would do a terrible job. So pre-painted. Um, I can always repaint them if I didn't like it. That's true. <coughs> oh, pardon me. 
Tortured Biscuit. Hey, guys. Nice playing, Rich. Thank you. Thank you. Have you guys seen the Raid movies? I'm just curious because you never talk about martial arts movies, and they are definitely the best recent ones. Uh, yeah, I keep hearing how great those Raid movies are, and I have not watched them. They're on my list. It's high on my list, too. Yeah, they're the supposed Raid. to be great. Yep. I really want to see Raid, and I really want to see Attack the Block. No. I didn't care much for Attack the Block. I oh, know yeah? A lot of people love that movie. Yeah, I've, I've heard uh, I've heard a lot of good things about that. I, I didn't think it was... Ah! It's it's sort of like a sci-fi action-y comedy, but I didn't feel like any of those elements were strong enough. Oh. So it just kind of was muddled for me. Oh, okay. A lot of people love that movie, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, The Raid is supposed to be good. I know I know the uh, Dread was, like, inspired a lot by... I don't think it was inspired. I think it was a coincidence that they both came out around the same time and they both take place almost completely in an apartment building. Oh, was that That's it? As far as I know, that's the only real connection. Oh, okay. But I remember when Dread came out, yeah, a lot of people were saying this is similar to The Raid, but... Oh, and I, I took that to mean uh, it was inspired by. But no, I, guess I, I don't think there's any similarities other than the fact that they both take place almost completely in oh. one building. Well, then there you go. As far as I know. There you go. Jay, Texas Chainsaw 2 equals best sequel canon ever made. Yes. It's one of my favorite canon movies, period. I love Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. Uh, the Shout Factory artwork also looks great. Yep, I got that. Or no, I don't have that Shout Factory. I have the Arrow Blu-ray, the UK Blu-ray, oh. which I don't think I'll buy the Scream Factory one just because I don't think it'll top that Arrow release. I ran out of juice. Oh, my God. I ran out of juice. I need the juice to see the chat. Oh my God. I need some water. <coughs> we need many things. We need many things. Many things in life. My sparkly water. Ooh, it sparkles. It sparkle water. Ooh. Oh, here's a new question. Has the witch seen Jay yet? The answer is I don't know. I hope not, because that would be super spooky. Fuck. The fuck? How long have we been streaming? We've probably been streaming long enough to stand up. Let's start our stand up timer now. I just got up. Wake up. We probably need to charge for a little bit. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna stand up again. It's probably time to stand up. <laughs> We've been here for a while. Stretch it out. Stretch it out, bitch. Stretch it out, bitch. Oh. I'll start my stand-up timer now. Okay, I'm gonna start my new stand-up timer now. We're gonna call that an hour. All right. And just as a reminder, I have not seen The Witch yet. <laughs> Jay, it's been five seconds. Have you seen The Witch yet? <laughs> I know the movie's probably longer than five seconds. <laughs> I just watched it on my phone. Jack and his standing fetish. I do. I, I have a stand. I'm, I'm sexually attracted to standing up. <laughs> Executed. Yes. Unnatural. You got to shut down that network, Rich. Oh, well, be fine. Oh, maybe not. That's all the way I'm fucking up there, isn't it? Oh, God. Where's my hacker? No, it's right there. It's in the train. I got, I got two, I got a turn and a half to pull this shit off. Do you have to get a hacker there or just someone close? Wait. Oh, my God! I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> You're getting behind. I'm getting behind. Let's see here. In the right, uh, checks his team, checks his mascot. Too, blah, blah, blah. Hey, Jack, Rich, Jay, thank you so much for introducing me to They Might Be Giants. Oh. I listened to Flood while at work last night and couldn't help but smile. Yeah, that's great. They Might Be Giants is brilliant. Jack, can you talk about how Flood isn't their best album again? <laughs> uh, I, I, would I, the conclusion? I'm sorry. After, <laughs> after after Rich was like, Flood is the only thing that matters. I, I went. I, I'm a huge They Might Be Giants fan. I have 
every single one of their albums. And after Rich made the preposterous claim that Flood was the only ma- album that mattered, I listened to all their albums. I didn't say the only one no, that nothing mattered. else matters but Flood. Flood is perfect. It's their best, everything. by far. By far, their best. Uh, I've come to the conclusion that every single They Might Be Giants album is their best. <laughs> for different reasons. <laughs> oh my god, Rich. That was painful. Yeah. In truth, I would argue that Factory Showroom is their best. Mm. What songs are on that one? Uh, S-E-X-X-Y. New York City. Oh, okay. Exquisite Dead Guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which That's is a good amongst album. my favorites. Uh, XTC versus Adam Ant. Mm. Um, I Can Hear You, the one that they recorded at the Edison Museum live. Uh an amazing, amazing yeah, album. Yeah, that's a good album. And, by the way, speaking of, on Sunday, someone mentioned that they this tour that They Might Be Giants is on might be their last. I have confirmed that. Oh, really? They, they have not said, stated for sure, but they're saying they think this is their last tour, and they're coming to Turner Hall. Oh, okay. I immediately bought tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Next month, in fact. Oh, wow. Okay. So they will be at Turner Hall. Which would be an how amazing much, How venue. much for tickets? A little on the expensive. They're like 30 bucks. Mm. 30 bucks? For, and for Turner Hall, that's kind of expensive. But to see They Might Be Giants one more time before they're all through is Maybe, maybe I can drag Karen it. up for that. Oh, you need to. You need, I mean, you, if, you have, if you've never seen them live, you should. Yeah. I got a chance to see them at a small venue in Madison uh, close to 16 years ago. And I'm going to bring the shoe that John <laughs> Flansburg signed to Turner Hall to see if, I can, if, if Lionel is signing. <laughs> 30, well, 30, $30 isn't expensive for most venues, but Turner Hall is kind of a smaller venue. It's standing room only, so there's no assigned seats. So, I, th- I mean, I think $30 is expensive. It depends on the concert and depends on the venue. Yeah. I mean, there's a, a worth it. yeah, yeah. I think that would be. Um, there's now some U.S. dates announced for John Carpenter oh, touring. Yeah, yeah. The closest he's coming to here is Detroit. Okay. And tickets are like eighty bucks. Oh my god. Something like that, seventy bucks, eighty bucks, which is like that would be a once <laughs> once in a lifetime thing. Yeah. Like, cause he's he's older. I doubt he would tour much more after this. I mean, I guess it's possible, <coughs> but. Detroit's a bit of a drive. Uh, Detroit's like six hours from here. Yeah, because yeah, you got to go around the lake. Yeah, so that's that's it's in July, I think. So I don't know if I can justify it as much as I it, as much as I would like to. If it was Chicago, no question. Of course. Oh, of course. But even even like, and even, I would pay eighty bucks for Chicago, but. Even like, 80 bucks in Detroit, having to drive there, and you'd have to get a hotel, the whole thing. Like even if it was the Twin Cities, and that's like a five-hour drive, too. That's more of a straight shot than Detroit. Yeah. Well, and the Twin Cities are nicer to visit than I'm sure Detroit is. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Detroit. Yeah. Fucking Detroit. But, Ugh. I mean, to see him live. I know. I know. It's tempting. It is. But So I bought, I bought a couple tickets to They Might Be Giants because it's their it's possibly their last tour. They are important to me. Like, and as far as best albums is concerned, like, their self-titled, their first album was so weird. (laughs) You can't even, how can, like, that album should not exist. It's the strangest thing. (laughs) So important. Or like, um, what am I thinking of? Is it, is it John Henry with like Anna Ng? And snail shell, like the kind of more more straight up rockin' they might be giants. Hmm. Ah, everything they do, everything they do is amazing. Okay. I don't know any. I, like I know a lot of their songs, but mm. I don't know any albums. Like oh. I'm bad with albums, just because sure. I've heard all these miscellaneous songs, sure, and sure. like mixes and stuff. So, hmm. it's and you know I only know just because they are my my, my favorite band. Like Apollo 8, uh, everyone needs to own Apollo 18. Everyone needs to have Apollo 18 in their music collection just for shuffle. 
Hmm. Because the end of Apollo 18 is the fingertips montage, where it is 15 three-second songs. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's it's crazy. It's dumb. <laughs> and you need that in your shuffle, just so when you're shuffling through music, every once in a while, a three-second They Might Be Giant song <laughs> will pop up and put a smile on your face and go away. <laughs> They're playing at Turner. It's a good venue for them. Good old, they might be giants. <coughs> oh, my God. If they might be giants, we're playing at the Borg Ward. Oh, Jesus. That would be amazing. They would never do, though. They would never do that. Uh, one, because it's shut down, and two, because I think they have standards. <laughs> they don't want to work in a, in a tiny closet with no working bathroom? <laughs> In a shitty neighborhood. <laughs> That's not something they would be interested in doing. Right. Hmm. November Tango 19. Guys, what's your opinion on piracy? I have for a couple of films and I have for a couple of films and my internet sucks, so I downloaded my favorite RLM episode so I can see Jack's beautiful dome in 1080p. <laughs> Pi uh, piracy. Uh, in general, I do not pirate things. The only things I've, uh, the only torrents I've ever gotten are things that are completely unavailable in any way, uh -huh. where nobody is losing money on it. Um, but in general, no, I do not. The I, smaller you are, the more it hurts. There, there's that too. Yeah, yeah. people. Have, but the thing is, like, people get in that mindset of like, it doesn't matter the size of it anymore. Mm -hmm. I just want it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. It's like, and they have that mindset of like, it's a big studio movie. They're going to make all their money anyway, so I'll just take it. Yep. I'll just get, you know, my own copy of it. But that, you know, trickles down where you try and come up with justifications for anything that you torrent. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, it, it, it hurts. It hurts people on our level, so. It, it hurts on, I would say it hurts on every level. Because at, well, sure. at the very least, it's skewing the, the metrics, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. If you torrent Star Wars The Force Awakens, especially if you already paid to see it in the theater, I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. If you if you torrent, like, the small little indie band, they they only made, like, $1,000 off their album, and you torrent that, yeah. you're a monster. Mm -hmm. Well, that, the battery, that movie I was talking about earlier, the zombie movie my friends made, they got fucked by piracy. Yeah. They, they yeah, because they, they, I guess they tracked down, like, how many downloads there, there, there you go it, and they got completely fucked because of that it yeah. hurts the, the creative people who are taking risks yeah. yeah and they don't have the resources right that's who it kills yeah i don't uh i don't like the fact that it's called piracy because i think that's how people start that justification yeah i'm just it's i'm i'm making a copy of it that's not the same as steve I've, I've heard people try and justify it too as saying it's the, the same as uh like dvring a tv show I've heard that. Yes, it's exactly like DVRing a show and then uploading it to the internet yes. for hundreds of thousands of people to take. No, it's <laughs> it's stealing. No, no matter if it's The Force Awakens or a small production company's movie, you are stealing something. I can't stop you from doing it, but if you do it and you enjoy the thing you pirated, go find a way to give these people money. Yes. Sure. Ag agreed. But I, I think... I pirated this. Oh, I really enjoyed it. Ah, yeah, they're not getting anything out of me. Why should they make anything else? Yeah. Is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. I... So if you do, and I know you do, I know you do, <laughs> and you enjoy the things you're pirating, find some way to give these people money for the thing you enjoyed. Yeah. yeah. It's important. Yeah, it's the only important. the only things that I've ever torrented are like I, the entire series of... Uh, Freddy's Nightmares, the Nightmare on Elm Street TV show, mm. because it is absolutely not available in any way. The minute it's available commercially, I will purchase it. <laughs> but it is it is impossible to get in any format. So, mm. like an example I have used, there's this game called Harvest Moon. Mm. Came out on the Super Nintendo, and no fanfare. wasn't a very publicized game. Came mm. out near the end of the Super Nintendo's life. Years and years later, when uh, Nintendo ROMs became a thing. Yeah. I saw this ROM for a game called Harvest Moon, like a farming simulator. That sounds so weird. I never would have. I never would have paid money for it. Yeah. I never would have bought it. I've seen it on the shelf. That just sounds weird. But since I could pirate it, I did. And you know what? I really fucking enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. 
I bought the, the next four games in the series sight unseen. Hmm? I made sure I gave them money. Sure. Because I liked what I, I saw. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, that's, that's, that's very close to the, the Valve Steam argument, where they, they combated video game piracy by making it easier to buy video games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, you know, oh, what if we have sales? What if they can get them digitally? And it did great. It, it worked gangbusters. And, uh, you know, I'm all for that. I, I have made it, a, I, I have pirated in the past, not since I've become a professional. Sure. Uh, I, I make it a point never to pirate anything ever because that would be incredibly hypocritical of me. <laughs> But Jack, what? I really want this thing. Yeah. And I don't have any money. Oh, okay. Well, so then, I should just take it, right? N- no, that's not how it that's not how it works. That's not a proper justification? No. Or or like I, I loved the uh the Game of Thrones justification where it was just like, but but I have to wait until it comes out on DVD. Oh yeah, people do that too. It it won't come out on DVD until next month and I want to watch it now. Yeah. That that doesn't count. That's not a proper justification. That's still stealing. <laughs> you see. <laughs> But I don't have HBO, and I want to watch it. Well, you that's why you get HBO mm-hmm. or don't watch it. <laughs> I wanted to see Ash vs. Evil Dead. I did, I did not have stars. Uh, but thankfully, Amazon uh, streaming had add-ons you can get with different stations. Yeah. So for the time that Ash vs. Evil Dead was on, I subscribed to the stars uh, section of that yep. so I could watch the show. There you go. And you know what? You've helped. You've also helped their metrics. Mm-hmm. Oh, people really like this Ash versus Evil Dead because they. Uh, I can see that because they gave money just for this one specific thing and blah blah. blah. Oh, right. oh, now we can give more money to them and you help. You're helping. Yes. And oh, <coughs> oh. <coughs> <coughs> that's gonna hurt you. Oh yeah, stealing. It's not piracy. You are stealing something all the time. Doobie Sandwich has this very serious question. Oh, okay, this is a serious question. If, hypothetically, YouTube terminates the Red Letter Media account and you are unable to recover it, yes. do you have a contingency plan in place for your videos, old and new? Yes. We think ahead. Yep. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I assume you, we could see when, when uh, it was announced that Blip was going to shut down. Like you could see the writing on the wall well before <laughs> it happened. So we we, yep. we were planning for it. I assume you have everything backed up, and everything is backed up on hard drives. Yep, yep. That's something I I don't remember who it was. I saw something like a couple different content creators talking about that primarily used Blip, and yeah. when it shut down, they're like, "So I'm losing all my videos." It's like you don't have them backed up anywhere. Like that's insane. That's rule number one. We we don't we, no, we don't just have the final episodes backed up. We have the entire edits mm-hmm. backed up, and the, the footage, the entire projects, the yes. footage. <laughs> you got to keep track of that stuff. Not only backed up, but like backed up implies that there are multiple copies. Yeah, you need your working copy and then your backup copy in case your working co- right. copy craps. Oh, the the only reason I'm implying. That that I'm I'm being uh, that I'm overstating this whole piracy is stealing thing is because I've heard people make the argument that piracy is not stealing because all you're doing is making a copy. Right. Well, that's yeah, that's like what I was saying about the DVR thing. Right. It's like no, you're not just making a copy though. Well, but but even that, so they sell the copies. Yeah. <laughs> A copy is worth something, <laughs> and so you are still stealing. And so that's why I'm harping on that so long, Chad. Sure. Uh, okay. Red Letter Media does have a contingency plan. Extremely Ordinary Stefan. Jay, you said that you are pretty much numb to violence in movies. What was the last movie that really disgusted you except Adam Sandler movies? <laughs> uh, Bone Tomahawk. Have you heard about this movie? That you came told out this me last about year? that movie. Yes. Yeah, which is a great movie, and everyone should watch it. Western with Kurt Russell. It's it's uh, Western town versus cannibals, and <laughs> it, it's not a horribly violent movie for most of the running time, which makes the one scene of graphic violence stand out much more. And it 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 made my jaw drop. 
<laughs> it, it did exactly what it should have done, what it was trying to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a really good movie, too. Oh, fuck! <sighs> That's what Jay said when watching Bone Tomahawk. Bone Tomahawk is a really, really great movie. Really Bone. great performances. Kurt Russell, uh, uh, Richard Jenkins, and mm. surprising performance by Matthew Fox from Lost. Oh, yeah. He's really like great him. in the movie. I like him in general. I, he's blah. Like, he's the main guy on Lost. He's normal man, normal man guy. That's who he plays. Did you ever see uh, Smoking Aces? Mm-mm. Oh, Smoking Aces is a fun action movie. I've never he seen has that. A, he has a very small role in Smoking Aces, and it's great. Okay. Also, he's in Speed Racer. Oh, yes, which I've still never seen. I remember you were saying that it's got a bad rap. I am so into Speed Racer. <laughs> I will forever be a Speed Racer apologist. Not even apologist. I think it's legitimately good. Ooh, free action, and she's nowhere near anything else. Oh, um, joy. Uh, Stukia, I, every once in a while I check out the Red Letter Media subreddit. I don't know about its degeneracy, but that's just kind of Reddit in general. It goes in waves. But I'm on there every once in a while. I know there was a discussion on the subreddit recently uh, about someone. Someone was legitimately asking how me, as a grown adult, has yet to figure out how to do finger quotes. And it was very important to them to figure out how does how does an adult not know how to do <laughs> finger quotes? <laughs> That's very insensitive of them. It's very to bring insensitive up your, your horrible condition. And I've been I've been telling people like I'm working with a physical therapist to fix me. Yeah, <sighs> you know, and like, and I think I'm getting close. Like, I one, can, one day at a time, Jack. One, one day, day at a time. time. I know, no, and I, it's like it's baby steps, and eventually it'll all click. But like, one day I'm gonna be able to do that, and I, I'm really. I'm really excited about that. Just keep trying. I'm just going to keep trying. I'm going to keep working every day. I'm glad that people on the internet are, are very concerned about They're your very condition. concerned about it. Um, Turbo Jesus 5,000 Rich. Have you read the Michael Crichton books Prey or the Andromeda Strain? No. I feel like they would be right up your dark, dank, slightly urine-scented alley. <laughs> Both quality and thoughtful sci-fi. Which maybe I should. I have read Jurassic Park, the yeah. book. Well, that's, I mean, hopefully, yeah. Mo- hopefully most people Michael have. Michael Crichton. That's a, that's a good book. They should shorten up that rapid fire animation. It should be. It needs to be quicker. <laughs> it does. These are the it, important things. Get, get your shit together, people. People who make game. I, I'm I'm not doing my physical rehabilitation at the Emperor Palpatine Physical Rehab Center. No, <laughs> mainly because it's not a real place. I would assume. <laughs> Mostly because not. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Alvin Fox would like to know what happened to the Half in the Bag episode 46 with warm bodies in movie 43. There's no video on the. Oh site yeah, there's just the movie 43 bit. Um, we just never re-uploaded it. Doesn't mean we won't. It just means we haven't. <laughs> we were really good about making sure everything was was re-uploaded once Blip went down. But that one, for whatever reason, cracks fell in the cracks. It fell in the cracks, nope. and we've just been busy with other stuff and haven't bothered to re-upload it. Well, Alvin, Alvin so, noticed. Well, thank you for noticing. We will get taken care of eventually. There you go. That's kind of a blah episode aside from the Movie 43 discussion. Mm-hmm. And the Movie 43 discussion is on YouTube, so it wasn't a top priority. Okay. Sure. Uh, Anonymous would like to know, uh, if RLM ever breaks up, who gets guardianship of Rich? Mike, <laughs> Mike or Jay? Uh, you do, Jack. What? We've decided. What? <laughs> He's moving in with you. That was never part of the deal. Okay, Rich, you Ow. get to move in. Ow. You get to move in. <laughs> But Why I've, ow? I feel so unwanted. Oh, I'm, I was getting... I, I have one condition. Jack, you have to take him. No, you have to take him. <laughs> ow. Had, that I, wasn't... The, we decided that it would be in your best interest. <laughs> oh! This, oh. Isn't, this isn't a trying to, to pawn you off on anyone. We thought it would be the, the, can, the warmest we environment can, for you. We can you. play all the games together. <laughs> you come over, we can play all the games together. 
We'll make a little rich bed for you. I'll put fresh hay and sheets on it every day. <laughs> put food in your rich bowl. <laughs> I'm not scooping your rich box, though. I hate you all. <laughs> I hate you all. <laughs> No, I don't need to get rid of Biscuit. Rich has been over a couple times and has done, has done fine with Biscuit. Biscuit is a hypoallergenic cat. I have a question about hypoallergenic cats. Or hypo, there's hypo, hypoallergenic dogs too, right? Yes. In both cases, I, I know nothing about this, so sure. this might be a dumb question. Do they shed? Yes. They do shed. Very much I thought so. you were going to say, do they shed? Do, do they, they shed? shed? <laughs> <laughs> have, they, have they come up with a, a design for an animal that doesn't <laughs> shit yet? I'd be more inclined to get a pet if it didn't shed. <laughs> they do shed. I mean, I, I guess that makes sense. They're very, hairy, very but... much so. Okay, I didn't know if it was like if they did, if it was less so, or I believe the the, the idea behind most hypoallergenic animals is actually that they are much hairier okay. than normal because it's not the hair that causes the allergies. It's usually the dander, like the skin ah, flakes. Okay. And the more hair, or the tightly woven hair, means that less skin flakes are getting out. All right. I believe that to be true, much like bullet density, <laughs> perhaps I'm not the expert yeah, that I want I, to ask. Okay. I, didn't, I just didn't know if you knew offhand. As Biscuit is an incredibly hairy cat. Okay. I brush Biscuit every other day. Yeah. With, like, the special hairbrush, and I get a hairball Ooh. that is the size of a kit. See, I would be more inclined to get a pet. If they didn't shed ever, because we had cats at my old place, yep. and I, I, I hated it. Hair everywhere, all the time, mm -hmm. regardless of how much you clean up after them, and I hated it. So I need to get a hairless pet. That's the only solution. Uh, Telegon, I'm sorry if I missed your tip question. Um, hold on. Let me, let me highlight you, Telegon, and then you can tell me. I, I don't see it, but I have you up here, so tell me uh, – Ask your question in chat, and I will. I will. I don't see it. I'm sorry. It, things are getting away from me. Things are getting away from me. Yes, you know, the, for for a short period, we were cat free. We had cats before we had the boys, and the cats did not like the boys. Oh, sure. So we had to get rid of the cats because you know humans win. Did you, Did you consider getting rid of the boys? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we talked about it. Do you make a pro and con list? Yep. Yeah. Yep, the whole thing. Um, boys won because uh, we knew that eventually there would be a point in which we wouldn't have to clean up their shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's never ending with cats, I guess. Cats and dogs, you never have to stop cleaning up their shit. Yeah. Um, have to stop. Oh! Ooh. If you kill her, I'm going to be pissed. But, uh... So for a while, we were, we were pet-free, and those were... Gloriously hair free years. I mean, uh, not just this hair, but like, <laughs> you know, you never have to worry about like a piece of hair on a, on a piece of clothing. You never have to like check yourself before you leave the house. Yeah, see, I can't stand that. It's tough. We love Biscuit. I like, I like animals. Mm -hmm. I like cats and dogs, but yeah. I can't, would not be able to stand only one because of the hair. It's true. So I'm getting it. If I get a pet, I'm going to get a hairless thing. Mm. If it if it wasn't the the children were the tipping point and they were very adamant about getting an animal. If it were just up to me, nothing, nothing. Yeah, but the children can be persuasive. More, the children can be annoying. Yeah, and I said like, eh, it'll be less annoying to sh yeah, I can shut them up. <laughs> Here's a thing I can shut them up with. <laughs> ah, rapid fire. Didn't even need it. Didn't even need it. Shotgun. Shotgun, I tell you, shotgun. Sword, sword could not have done that. Because <laughs> the sword is fucking awful. Ah, uh, Lord Belmont. I had a small hypoallergenic dog that didn't shed uh, called a Maltese. It oh, was okay. horrible. Jay should get one. Also, did Jay see the witch yet? No. Oh, okay. Update, I've not seen the witch yet. We yeah, have dogs are better than cats anyway. We have about a half an hour before the Did Jay See the Witch update. Okay. So, you know, dogs are fun. Dogs are good. We had dogs growing up, and I always liked the dogs. 
but I hate the hair everywhere. And as a kid, you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> My parents deal with it. Right. No, get yourself a poodle. No hair, no slobber, only greatness. No. Nah, I don't, I don't like poodles. poodles. I know people that have had poodles. I just want to kick them. Yeah. There's something about poodles. What was that dog that I was... I hate yap dogs in general. <laughs> yeah. I like small dogs. Like, I wouldn't want a big dog. I like littler guys. Oh, I'd get a big, I'd get a big gross dog. <laughs> I was watching uh, the, the dog show, the Westminster Dog Show or whatever this year. Whatever it's called. The dog show that happens after, uh, after the Thanksgiving Day Parade. Yeah. Westminster, yeah. Yeah, okay. And they had a dog on there that looked like a dog from Bloodborne. And apparently, so it was just like this big, like, beast of a dog. It was it was called like a, someone tell me what it was called again. You told me in the uh, in the chat what it was called. It was like a, like a hunting hound or something. Or so, it, it, was, it was a weird, creepy name, too. And it was this big, spindly dog with creepy hair. And it's like, ooh, I want that dog. <laughs> It was great. I <laughs> think about a wolfhound, are you? Ooh, a wolfhound. Maybe that was it. I'll be back. I'll be back. The oh yes, the Irish wolfhound. Oh yeah, those are, dogs. Those are beautiful dogs. Beautifully creepy dogs. They're gigantic. I know yes. that much. I like big dogs. All right. <laughs> How you doing? Oh, we're doing okay, actually. Have you lost anyone? Not this mission. Okay. Not the nice. last two missions, Jack. Nice, nice. I've lost two people this whole this whole playthrough right now. Oh, that's great. You saw one of them. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. They are they are Doctor Seuss looking dogs, Irish wolfhounds. Amazing creatures. I would definitely get something like that. And I can say something. I can say that because I just won't get a dog. And so, like, in my head, I'll get the weirdest dog imaginable because I just will never get a dog. Oh, also, something I, I wanted to mention before um, might not matter to anyone right now, but Twitch is starting to instate a new thing for, um, for previously uh, recorded videos. Yeah. Uh, the chat memory. You can now watch a video uh, of a previous broadcast on Twitch and turn the chat on to see what people were saying. What people were saying in the chat during the video. Huh. I think that's kind of a neat idea. Yeah. I know a lot of people who watch the videos later on don't get to experience the chat and that's part of the fun. And Twitch is saying you can do that now. Yes, yeah, so all of your lame jokes are being recorded. But I think that's a neat thing. Twitch is uh, instating chat memory for oh, okay. past broadcasts. So if you watch a past broadcast, you can actually see what the chat was saying. Okay. But don't they delete the, the videos after so long? They do. Okay. They do. They delete the past broadcast, but we also cut them up and send them to YouTube. So right. We also, cu you, we also cut them up and archive them on Twitch. So you can watch either. I don't know... If they will save the chat for the, um, what do you call them? Highlights. I would doubt it. Pro I would doubt it as well. Fuck. It changes the algorithm or the the mechanics of One, the uh, yep. the the digital the bicentennial. <laughs> yeah. The McAlgorithms. The McAlgorithms. <laughs> See, son of Breen, I think that's more important. Irish wolfhounds have a lower life expectancy than smaller dogs. That's even better, because then it'll die and be, you'll get out of your way. Oh, I love this dog. Now it's dead. Great. <laughs> Don't need a dog anymore. Done with that. Done with that one. <laughs> that's how I am when family members die. Mm-hmm. Well, that's done. They're gone. Jack and Rich, I... Just watched your Star Wars conversation, and would really everybody <laughs> did apparently, <laughs> and would really like to get yours, especially Rich's opinion on a theory of who Ray's on um, Ray's family connection. Luke, I just <laughs> it's going to be Luke. This I, isn't a question. I think it's, it's going to be Luke. I think that's too obvious. I don't think they care 
that is obvious. Um, it's going to be Luke. <laughs> that's, yeah, unfortunately. I would uh, like it not to be Luke. I'm saying some sort of Obi-Wan connection. I like that. I like that. Because you hear Obi-Wan's voice in her little uh, flashback mm-hmm. dream sequence. Yep. I think it would be a better world if it wasn't Luke. Yeah, I agree. Not just the Star Wars world, just our world, the world we <laughs> live in. It would be a better <laughs> Who are you gonna shoot? Oh, just can't reach. Well, I have other options. Oh, I know, I know. I know. She's a Palpatine. <laughs> <laughs> Get weird with it, why not? Right? Haven't they said that? Didn't JJ Abrams say the script for the next one is weirder and goes in a much different direction? Mm. Oh, I don't know. I because that's what I want. Because everyone's I, not everyone's, but one of the biggest complaints about Force Awakens is that's so similar to A New Hope. Yeah. And to me, it's like I get it. I get why they would do that with that movie, and I was fine with it because yeah. you're reintroducing people to what Star Wars used to feel like before the prequels. <laughs> uh, that's a good. Way and to put I'm it, by I'm the way. I I am okay with it as long as the next one goes in its own path. Sure. Which I think was the plan. Is you know. Esta- reestablish this world will you know hit a bunch of familiar beats to kind of ease you into it mm-hmm. and now we have all these new interesting characters established now they can go off and do their own thing if the next one is more callbacks and more you know like if it's really similar to empire or something mm-hmm. yeah it'll retroactively make me like the force awakens less oh okay so. sure no they have an opportunity here yeah they i i like the way you put that reintroducing people to how they should feel about Star Wars. Yeah, that's what that movie was. Yeah. yeah. I know some people didn't like that. They they didn't like that it followed A New Hope so closely, but mm-hmm. I, as a setup for a new series, I was okay with it. Okay. Let's as see. long as they now go in their own direction. <laughs> that's the important part. Uh, let's see here. Anonymous says, when is the five-hour director's cut of Space Cop coming out? Never. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I don't have a funny answer. Just oh. never. Okay, no, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Lasers, also anonymous, says, Jay, have you seen the Italian-American sequels to the Evil Dead known as the La Casa series? I think I saw one of them. Specifically, Witchery. Witchery. Starring Linda Blair and David Hesselhoff. I own it. That came out on a double pack uh, Screen Factory released. So it's Witchery and another movie called Ghost House, but I have not watched them yet. Oh, okay. So I have them. I like that Linda Blair, and I'm sure the movie's schlock, so. (laughs) Well, Linda Blair and David Hasselhoff. Linda Blair and David Hasselhoff. You can only hope that it's schlock. That's so fucked up, like, when, when there's an Italian release of a movie and they just label it as a sequel to something else. That used to be a thing. They can do that? They did that. So, yeah, this witchery movie with Linda Blair, they called it, like, Evil Dead. I guess Evil Dead 3? Because I think that would have been before Army of Darkness. Sure. But they have a whole series of them. There's, like, an Evil Dead 3, Evil Dead 4. They have nothing to do with Evil <laughs> Dead in any way. Wasn't that we discovered we discovered that for the Ninja movies? Right? Like, Ninja 1, Ninja 2, Ninja 3? Well, that has nothing to do with foreign releases. Oh, right, but they, they were just like, eh, it's Ninja 3. Yeah, yeah. It has nothing yeah. to do with Ninja. It has nothing to do with the other ones, yeah, but yeah. it's a recognizable name. <laughs> There's also, uh, I think he's, yeah, Italian, Bruno Mattai is the director's name, mm-hmm. who just made his own Terminator 2. He just released a movie called Terminator 2. <laughs> because apparently that's something you can do. Yeah, apparently. There you go. <laughs> I think we have a copy of it here, actually. So that's a, <laughs> probably a good best of the worst movie. Oh, that's great. Uh, then we're doing it. Great. <laughs> Lord Belmont, have you guys seen that Alamo Drafthouse video that shames the girl that left an angry voicemail after oh. kicking her out for texting? Yes, I've seen that. It's funny. They're strict about that there. 
As they should be. That's where you go see a movie like The Witch, so you don't have to deal with dummies. Mm -hmm. Also, it sounds like a Maltese would be great for Jay, says Lord Belmont. All right. There you go. I've, I've, I've always wanted that for the nicer movie theaters. Like maybe like some cubby holes. Mm. Like before you go into the movie, put your phone, <laughs> put, put stuff, you know, we'll lock it up. Nobody can take it. Just put your phone in the cubby hole. And but Jack, what if I want to check my email during the movie? Yeah, but why would you? But why would you? Why would you want to do that? Because I want to. But you're watching. Because I can. Movie, but you're paying to watch a movie. But, but there's nothing happening in the scene. It's just people talking about stuff. I don't care. I'm here for the second screen experience. <laughs> I'm waiting to sync my phone with the movie so I can get more information about the characters in the world. <laughs> I hate that. There's, there, they, they announced something like that uh, before episodes of The Walking Dead. It's time to start your second screen experience. Oh, that's still a thing? Still a I remember thing. when I got Tron Legacy on Blu-ray, there was like an app you could get to have a second screen thing. Yep. And that's the only time I've ever heard of it being used for anything. Because, you know, we want you not to watch the thing we made. <laughs> Look away. Look for a home, away. For a home video release, like something like Tron Legacy, like obviously I bought that because I had already seen the movie. Oh, like, sure, yeah. For repeat viewings, it makes sense, but something like watching Walking Dead for the first time, that episode, why, why you that's weird. Why you screen experience, right? <laughs> Apparently people really liked it. There, There's one for um, Game of Thrones that gives a map of Westeros that tells you where the scene is taking place. Oh. Which is very important because that shows confusing as fuck. Sure. And so it's like, oh, this is where this is. This is who, who this land belongs to. Like, it gives you that kind of yeah. background experience. Oh. The second screen background experience. <laughs> Telegon. Rich. What? Do <laughs> you... <laughs> Rich. Uh, do you think Snoke... Is Darth Plagueis? I don't give a shit. I like how they're asking you all these Star Wars questions, and you couldn't care, you couldn't care even less than I do. I know, <laughs> I know. I think they know that. Is that oh, is that a thing now? Okay, okay. So. he's a he's a name we know, and he's the the only name we know I could think of who would be an evil mastermind that's not Palpatine. He doesn't act anything like Palpatine. Yeah. So yes, I, whatever. <laughs> who gives a shit? <laughs> Uh, Rich, who was a better uh, starship captain, Kirk or Picard? Picard. Yeah, Picard. <laughs> Spock well, or Data? You know what, Kirk? I, I think Kirk got Kirk. Actually, it might be Kirk, just because I think he had to do more with less. Mm -hmm. it's, it's <laughs> an, you know what? It's an apples and oranges type situation. But actually, before we get that, uh, no, uh, Rich didn't just shoot a disabled. Uh, battle mech. That battle mech has two forms. First, you need to kill the driver, and then you need to kill the yeah. automated uh, suit. So he shot at the suit after killed the driver. So <coughs> I think it's an apples and oranges situation with Kirk and Picard, where the technology was so less in the Kirk phase that he had to do more with less. Yeah. But Picard has more responsibilities and I think handles them better. So I say Picard. Yeah, yeah. I say Picard just because, you know, like, he had to deal with people, like, living on his ship, families growing on his ship, you know. He had more responsibilities. Who's a more interesting character, though? Uh, I, I, I've always preferred Picard. Yeah. He, he, had his, he has a strong moral line, and that was the basis of the show. That was all the good episodes was, was sticking to your morals and how we're going to stick to our morals. Whereas Kirk was just like, I don't know, let's go here, punch some aliens, fuck some bitches. It's kind of refreshing to see a character who's, who's thinks diplomacy. Yeah. Politics and diplomacy is Picard's thing. It was great. Isn't that wonderful? It was great. What about, what about Emperor Snookenstein? <laughs> is he going to have a sword? <laughs> uh, how big do you think his laser sword's going to be? Is he flip? But are they too weak to flip? You, Maybe he just uses the lightning? But Rich, if you look uh, at the uh, scar on his face and compare it with this frame from episode three, you can clearly tell that this is going to be episode a... Episode six, Jack. 
What? Episode six. No, no, no. I'm saying if you look at it from episode three. Episode three can, isn't, isn't a factor anymore. You can clearly tell that this is a, a distant relative of General Grievous. <laughs> Here's the thing. Like, I like The Force Awakens. Uh, I'm interested in the next one. <coughs> yeah. There's nothing more boring to me than speculating on that of stuff. Course. I just want to go see the movie and experience it and be surprised when things happen. Listen to Jay, everybody. That's it. I, I, there's nothing more boring than talking about Star Wars right now. Do, do you know what speculation gets you? Nothing. Yeah. Let, let's say this. Let's say you speculate and you're right. Right? Like, let's say you figure out who Snoke is going to be. What do you win? <laughs> the Snoke Award! The, the, exactly. And you you know win the, the Snokey! The Snokey. <laughs> <laughs> and that's nothing. Just watch the movie. Yeah. Enjoy the movie when it comes out. <coughs> oh shit, now you started a shitstorm, Rich. <laughs> uh, I don't care. Fuck the Star Wars fans. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, them, fuck them to death. <laughs> <sighs> Let's see here. Oh, hold on. And there was more from, from Telegon. Um, Jay, if you could live in the universe of Battlefield Earth, Troll 2, or The Room, which would you pick and why? What was Battlefield Earth, Troll 2, or The Room? Yeah. The Room. It's the least dangerous place. Seems like a fun place. You can play football. Yeah, you can just play football Say in alleys. Say hi to Mark all the time. Yeah, just walk into <laughs> other people's apartments whenever you feel like. Seems like a pretty happy place. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. There you Troll go. Troll 2, you're going to get turned into a fucking plant. <coughs> a fucking plant? Yeah. And oh Battlefield Earth, you got to deal with Scientologists. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> Could you turn that down a little bit? <laughs> you know, th this time it's actually impossible. <laughs> that is actually impossible. All right. Let's see here. Um, Unk, Unk Dan, 85. Yeah. How are you guys with Jackie Chan? Here's $5 towards City Hunter. The most bizarre of his films. Probably. Love your stuff. I, I love Jackie Chan. I like him. I haven't seen a lot of his stuff. I saw Rumble in the Bronx when it came out. That was the big U.S. release. Uh -huh. Have, uh, haven't you gone back and seen any of his, like, hi, like, like his films? Not really. I think I saw... I did watch some in high school after Rumble in the Bronx. Sure, sure. I, I think I saw... Ah, uh, oh, fuck. What did I even see? Like, Drunken Masters, his big one... Police story? Police story. Was that out yet at the time? <laughs> yeah, that was probably out. They just made a police story three. Did they? Like last year. Weird. For some reason. But yeah, no, I, I have not seen a lot of his stuff. I have. I enjoy it a lot. That man. They there was a really fun uh, I wanna say a Swords, ladies and gentlemen, swords. You just whiffed with your sword, yeah. huh? Yeah. Swords? Yeah. Thwards in this game. Rich doesn't like them. There uh I think every frame is a painting the youtube channel did a really neat look back on jackie chan movies mm. and like what makes his well, where's he from is he from jackie stanvania i don't know does <laughs> anyone know what country he's from hong kong isn't it? hong kong sure i why? thought he was from the bronx he's, that's why he was rumbling that's why he there. was rumbling in there um, no wait I don't, know, I don't know where he's from well, i have no idea where he's from. i have no idea why his uh, why the movies he made in his own country are so much superior to the ones he made in America is because he got uh, apparently a ton more freedom. Oh, sure. To, you know, get the shot exactly right. To, well, and, uh, and do specific stunts, I'm sure, that they wouldn't allow him to do yep. here. And more importantly, they allowed him the time to plan his stunts correctly. Mm. So he's Chinese. Thank you. Yeah, I was just looking that up. China, so the movies he made in China... Uh, and they are. They're great. Go go watch a Jackie Chan movie. An old Jackie Chan movie. They're all fantastic. Oh, that mission blew. Oh, I'm sorry, Rich. Yeah, nobody died, though. Oh, well, there you go. Probably got a fuck ton of injuries. It's going to be painful. Five wounded. Yuck. That's everyone. Everyone's wounded. No, I had six. Oh, okay. I evac too, before they died. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, that's funny. They recovered with acid, but like one in three health. I hate that acid. Uh, sick says, hey, Rich, what are you looking forward to? Or what are you looking forward to Mass Infect Andromeda at all? What? 
Yes. I, I am not looking forward to it at all. I am not going to play the game or look at it or think about it. Oh, okay. The series is dead to me. There you go. I, maybe the question is, are you looking forward to it? So the answer is no. <laughs> Rich, do you think Snoke will have a double-bladed <laughs> saber in the shape of a tuning fork? <laughs> I think he's gonna have like a a cat of nine tails lightsaber. Ooh, there you it's go. It's gonna be a whip, and then the end of each lash is just gonna be a lightsaber. Oh, that's great. Oh, that would be so cool. <laughs> Star Wars is so retarded. <laughs> it, it's so it, fucking retarded. It would be like a nod to Indiana Jones. <laughs> that's not even that dumb an idea in Star Wars terms. I'm sure that's happened in the expanded universe. I'm sure. We're someone, out of all that now, though, Rich. Someone we're, quick we're in find, the hands of smarter uh, people. Quick find in the expanded universe some sort of lightsaber whip. We need to know if this exists. Because now that you say it, I, I'm, I'm, I want to say I'm 100% sure. There has to be. There's a lightsaber whip. That's great. We need a picture. It's got to be on the cover of one of the novels. And the novel is called, like, The Tug of the Force. Uh, I guarantee it's not called that. It's called. That's it's, what the porn parody is called. <laughs> it's called the, the the Dark Reckoning. Star Wars: The Dark Reckoning. Light whips are indeed a thing. Of course they are. Of course they are. Uh, Thank of you. Of course. <laughs> oh wait, is that a, is that a Wikipedia? Stop it! Someone's Wikipediaing me. The dumbest thing. Star Wars <laughs> is really the dumbest thing. <laughs> It's fantasy. Rich. The expanded universe stuff is the biggest <coughs> thing. It's fantasy. It's st- look at the Star Wars fans. This, it, it, Star Wars is the expanded universe. They like all the dumb shit. Not anymore. It's all gone. We, we got rid of all of how, it. How, how, how do you think there about, you go. about Jedi? I like Jedi. I like Jedi. Like, I like cold, uh, un- unattached space monks. <laughs> With no personality, <laughs> they wear a robe and they're very they're spiritual. Spiritual <clears throat> look of the fourth. Yoda told them about the fourth. Um, the lightsaber. Lightsaber. <laughs> it's funny because, like, the entire point of the second two Star Wars movies is like teaching Luke how not to fight. <laughs> like, l- literally, Luke's biggest challenge the the thing that makes him become a Jedi is his refusal to fight Darth Vader. Right. Because then he has achieved the Buddhist-like monk state, and every other Star Wars is like, let's see if we can fight more. (laughs) The plural of Jedi is Jedi, Rich. It was a word made up by a retard! (laughs) To describe a fictional space monk! (laughs) So, uh, light whips generally The plural of Jedi is suck my cock! (laughs) On the same principles and mechanics as lightsabers, emitting a coherent beam of energy that was used as a weapon. However, rather than a straight, meter-long blade emitted by standard lightsabers, light whips featured long, flexible blades that often exceeded several meters in length. Instead of one large crystal, they contained multiple small crystals, and the plasma in the blade had no cell barriers to keep it straight. It appeared standard for these weapons to emit only single blades, though cat of nine tail style light whips with multiple tassel- tassels were not unheard of, as the Sith Lumilia once owned one. Like lightsabers, light whips came in a variety of colors and shades, including red, orange, pink, yellow, and green. So what? not not only... The important part the important part of reading that, which I thought would be funny just because it was so boring. <laughs> the important part of reading that is not only is a light whip a thing, but the thing that Rich made up to be ridiculous, yeah. the light <laughs> cat of nine tails <laughs> is a real thing. Yeah. That doesn't surprise me. That already exists. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, Star Wars. Oh, Star it's it, It's fantasy. This just is what watch, we remember. Just watch the movies. Just watch the movie. Have fun watching the movie. Okay. November Tango. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> Lord. <coughs> oh, my. That just came out right at the wrong time. Uh, right at the wrong time. November Tango 19. To the Darth Plagueis comment before me. No, he died at the end of his book. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Rich quits. <laughs> He's done. <laughs> you killed him. He's, he's going to kill himself, and it's all your fault for talking about Star Wars. <laughs> I'm pretty 
sure like in the beginning of Rich's life, he was pretty like neutral towards Star Wars. Like, oh, it's a fine movie, but it doesn't really affect me. You people, uh, Star Wars fans, you people have made him hate Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of happens with any fandom, though. I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're right. When people let it take over their entire lives and their entire personalities, mm-hmm. it ruins it. Just enjoy the thing. Just enjoy the, just enjoy the thing. Life is fleeting. Yeah. Life en- is Enjoy fleeting. the thing and move on. Well, and, and you know what? We're, n- we're not saying that you can't be a super fan. Like, love it. Oh, be excited about stuff that you like. Absolutely. Absolutely. But maybe maybe don't talk about it to everyone all the time. <laughs> that on, only that one thing. <laughs> Or, or get incredibly irritated or upset when somebody does not share your opinion or enthusiasm. <laughs> you know. I, 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 it, I had mentioned on the last stream that I'm not a fan of Blade Runner. Yeah. I didn't say Blade Runner sucks. I didn't say I hate it. No. In I fact, said, you said that you really want to I like want it. to like Bla- yeah. Blade Runner. I've tried to like Blade Runner. Yeah. Um, I, it's also mentioned in this last half in the bag. Mm-hmm. Oh. So now more people are aware of oh, sure. the fact. And, and now it's a thing, oh, I hate Blade Runner. Why does Jay hate Blade Runner? I don't hate it. Jay, why do you hate it? Why do you hate Blade Runner? <laughs> I don't hate Blade Runner. But now that's the thing. If you don't love it right. as much as I do, you hate it. And, and somehow, by the way, your kind of like, your complicated feelings about Blade Runner. Right. Because they are. you got to reduce it down to the most simplest thing. Well, not only that, but it also cements other people's feeling for it. Like, people who liked Blade Runner Mm -hmm. before you had complicated feelings for it now love it. (laughs) Now it's the best, and you are wrong. Yeah, yeah. And I love Blade Runner. Sure. But I understand that you can have complicated feelings. Uh, Of all things, like, Blade Runner is (laughs) is something I I certainly understand why people like it. Yeah. Um, So of all the things to get annoyed that I don't like, that's a weird one to me. It is. When I'm not adamantly against it or saying you're stupid for liking it. Jay, why are you trying to stop me from watching Blade Runner? That's the question. You can't enjoy Blade Runner because nope. I don't. You're not allowed to I anymore. want to like Blade Runner and you're not letting me like it. That's true. Jay's a hate monger. Point taken. Where were we now? <laughs> Anyways, from November 10, go 19. How do you guys feel about the EU lore being condensed in the Clone Wars show, retconning the prophecy and Obi's, you know. The only lore that has ever mattered to me in Star Wars is the movies. Yes. That's all, and that's all that should matter. You watch a movie, everything should be contained in that movie. Who cares about what lore is what? Oh. Talking about the shit. No, no, we we moved oh, on, but we, I was, we came back to it. We came back to it. I was just finishing up. Uh, Rich, we have here's a real question. Hey, Rich. Yeah. From Boutsner Mustard Lover, Cisco or Janeway? Cisco. 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 C- Cisco. Okay. Janeway's a boob. <laughs> Two of them. <laughs> Janeway is. Constantly fucking up. I'll, I'll agree with Janeway you. Janeway belongs in a prison. Yes, J- Janeway has uh, has successfully undergone several war crimes and time crimes. Janeway, her problem isn't. It's not even the acting. I like I, li- I like Kate Mulgrew a lot. Yeah, and she does what she can with a horribly, horribly inconsistently written character. There are episodes On the where where watching. Janeway. She holds to her values so strongly in the worst situations, even though it's the dumbest thing and it almost gets everybody killed. Yep. And then there are other episodes where she makes ridiculous compromises for little to no gain. <laughs> yep. She's horribly inconsistently written. Yes. Voyager, the problem with Voyager, the major problem is the writer's lack of knowing what to do with the premise and the series and the characters. They, they had no uh, they had no balls they had a, on they had, a, they had a great premise and then no direction after that. Yep. Well, I think they were wish-washy. Yeah. Ghosts? No. Ghosts? I think there's ghosts. I'll go investigate. There might be ghosts. No, they had they had they had no convictions. They had no, you know, like like we were talking about with Next Gen. 
all that show that show core value that show's core value was about diplomacy, mm-hmm. morality. Every episode, all the great episodes, can be tied to that central theme. And Voyager didn't have that. They had a premise, not a theme. We gotta get home. We're very far away from home. Uh, the, the ship's about to blow up. Everyone's dying. Yep. And Jane was like, we cannot give the Kazons our replicator technology. <laughs> it would influence the direction of their society. <laughs> and then the next episode, well, Janeway, it'll take us like a, several months to go around Borg space. Mm-hmm. Let's make a deal with the Borg and give them all of our technology so we can get safe passage. <laughs> and we can trust them now. That's Janeway. Yeah. Well, it's not Janeway. That's like two different people. That's the problem. That's the problem. Excellent Star Trek question. It was ghosts, by the way. Oh, good. I took care of them. Thanks. Jay ain't afraid of no ghosts. I ain't afraid of no ghosts. One small ball says, I just watched the movie Crawl for the first time since childhood. I imagine the main hero being a Jedi who used the Force to control his weapon. You know, I've actually never seen Crawl. I've never seen Crawl. That's one of those, I think Liam Neeson is in it. Is he? Qui-Gon himself is in it, yeah. But I've never seen it. That's a, that's a, that's a very well known B movie, and I just have I just never gotten around to see it. I've seen it when I was younger. I remember liking it when I was younger. Sure. Yeah. I remember he didn't use the weapon enough to make me happy. <laughs> <laughs> that features like the it was like a like a frisbee it's that you good. threw with it's, knives. With on it's, 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 on a, it. it's a big deal, like getting that weapon. And this weapon's the most important thing, and then it, it's not even needed at the end. <laughs> it, it, he uses it at the end and it yeah. fails. Oh, really? And, yeah. Oh. oh. Spoiler alert for Crawl. <laughs> yeah, you, had, you, had, you had 40 years to watch that one. Eh. <laughs> I'm going to spoil the fuck out of some Crawl. Yep. All right, the, the magic weapon doesn't defeat the monster. It's the power of love. Oh. oh. The power of love and marriage. And marriage. The bond, and marriage? The bond of marriage. Wait, I'm sorry, what? Defeats the monster. That's horrible. That's how it ends. Oh no! Now I really want to see it. <laughs> their 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 <laughs> marriage and love turns into a fire that shoots out of their hands. Okay. And it it, it murders the big monster. Oh my god! Because he uses the super weapon. He stabs. He throws it at the monster. He just gets like stuck in the monster. It's just like stuck in his head, and it didn't do anything. <laughs> After the whole movie was like, the glaive is the weapon. You need to harness the power of the glaive, and then whoops. <laughs> Oh, Why didn't he, anyone tell him that marriage is a more powerful <laughs> weapon? Because Huey Lewis wasn't around yet. That's, okay, there you go. That's the power of love. <laughs> bam, bam. There, I spoiled. Bam, bam. I spoiled Kroll. You did it. Uh, Mr. Shy Smile uh, wants to know if we've seen the Scottish independent horror film. So I'm gonna say probably not. <laughs> the House of Him. No. If you haven't, you should check it out. I've not even heard of it. The House of Him, Scottish independent horror film. Okay. So uh, the House of Him. <laughs> oh, we're gonna get it end of Nessie, but have to the House of Him. <laughs> That's the power of love. Da, da, I saw da, da, Huey da, Lewis da. at Summerfest one year. Yeah. Big head on that guy. He's got a large head. I met him that year. You met him? I met him. Oh, okay. We were shooting a video that never quite turned out, oh. and he agreed to be in our video, and he was very snide about it. Oh, really? But uh, he was snide he about it. He has a large head, right? Uh, for his body. He has a big head. I, th- I think if he if he put on a little muscle, yeah, a little weight. It would look a little different. Okay. Oh. Oh, is this time to stand up? Well, more importantly, Jay. Uh, oh, by the way, for anyone wondering, I have not seen The Witch yet. Jay has not seen The Wish <laughs> or, or The, the witch. witch. Or The Wish. <laughs> and for I an- wish I had seen The Witch. You wi- oh, I wish, I wish I saw that witch. Yeah. Which witch? <laughs> <laughs> and for everyone else, if you've been sitting, stand up. It's good for your body. I just stood up to investigate the ghosts, so I'm okay. Okay. Oh, God. It's important. I do... Since we've been standing up every hour, I do feel better at the end of every stream. That's good. It just it just promotes a, a wellness. You want yeah, you want you want the blood to be flowing. Yeah. <coughs> now I got Huey Lewis stuck in my head. Never a bad thing. 
Don't need money. Don't need fame. Don't need no credit card. To ride this train. To ride this train. <laughs> oh, dude, how else does it go? Ride this train. Something, something, something. It's the power of love. <laughs> oh, come on. Don't need no credit card. Right? I, I don't know music. You know Back to the Future, though. Yeah, but I don't know music. I'm sure it's something, something above. I don't know, man. the fan. power of love.